standpoint is sponsored by Goel Good Energy Fortune Rice Nescofa Auntie Mary's Baby Grad Mixture Leaf Tomato Paste Tina Tetsinu Vital Making Life Memorable Welcome to this standpoint. Yes, today is one of the exciting programs that excites me, myself, and I because I have the right people here. I have its family, and um, we're celebrating young mothers. It's part of our Mother's Month series. And last week we talked about pregnancy the options. Today we are going to look at the, challenge, the challenges of pregnancy, eh, the untold stories, the things that you have to find out for yourself. The crazy things that pregnant women do, the joys, the fears, and uh, the, difficulty, the difficulties that come with pregnancy. It's going to be a program and a half. My name is Wahine Gifty, and to welcome to the standpoint, I'd like to say thank you to GTP for my cloth. Ophelia Crossland Design so this dress for me. My hair is by Ishula. Ishula will hook you up. With all the heck, uh, the wig cups that you and the braid cups that you need to so contact them. Makeup products by Paba Cosmetics and applied by Makeup and More. My earrings today, yeah, it's only earrings by Kua Design. Pregnancy and the challenges. We'll be back. <laughs> Today we are going to discuss the challenges of pregnancy, real life stories, and the things that nobody tells you, but you see, uh, travel and see. When you go on that pregnancy journey, you will see. Yes, my panelists are laughing <laughs> because they have experiences to share. The standpoint is sponsored by African Women's Development Fund, AWDF, supporting African women's rights organizations across Africa. Like the standpoint, we are always grateful to them. Tina Ted Herbal, they produce Tina Ted Tomake and Venike. Very good for women. Lip tomato paste, good tomato, good taste. And next game is Aunt Mary's Baby Grad Mixture and next coffer, Black Tony. Well, Good energy. Walmart Africa Limited manufacturers of Fritol cooking oil and fortune rice. Fortune rice comes in three types. The green one, very good for the soft dishes like omutu and rice water. The orange one is good for wache. And then the wine one, fantastic for jollof and fried rice. So don't miss it. Go for it anytime, anytime you want to prepare any of, my, any of um, these dishes. But... On the set tonight to discuss the topic challenges of pregnancy. My extreme left, I think all of them, I saw some part of their pregnancies. <laughs> mm, I saw some part. It's Selikem Akolache Apalu. She is a journalist with GTV and the host of Women Voices. <laughs> Welcome to the standpoint, finally. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next to her, I have Afi Agbenyo, who is a social activist and hosts Different Shades on 3FM. Welcome back to The Standpoint. Thank you. Good to see you. Yes, yeah, same here. Mm, the last one I remember. <laughs> Women called to worship. <laughs> You will talk true. <laughs> <laughs> and then next to me, right next to me, SG Fab Bampo, journalist with Joy FM, finally on the standpoint. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Good nice to have you here. Nice Gifa. to be here with you, Gifts. This is family. Yes. And celebrating young women. Let me start with Selikem. What did you know about pregnancy before you got pregnant? Well, that um, it was... It will be fun. Oh, it's an easy ride. Mm. And um, before you know it, you'll be free. Mm. After the first trimester, it was a little bit horrible in the first trimester. Second trimester is okay. The third one, oh, you breeze through it. Mm. And then I got there and I got sorely disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back to that. Afi, what about you? What did I know? Hmm. Protruding stomach, I have mm. to be frank. Very little 
my youngest had had I think three babies already, so I had seen her go in and out, but I didn't take particular attention. I have to be frank. So it came to me as a surprise. Diva, what about you? I knew a bit of what to expect mm. in terms of the difficulties. I had heard about, oh, it will be okay, but I had also seen that, no, it would not be okay. Mm. My mother um, had had difficult pregnancy and had told me mm. about her experience. And I had lived with an aunt who was pregnant at a point in time. So I realized that it wasn't exactly an easy ride. Do you agree with this saying that pregnancy is not sickness? Pregnancy is not a disease? Yes and no. It's difficult to say yes, it's difficult to say no. For some, they breathe through it without really much problems. Mm. But there are many women who have a lot of problems. I think the deficiency is people don't talk about it. Mm. And that is why there's this highfalutin perception that, oh, pregnancy is not a disease. For some, mm. it's a killer. Mm. So, like, why is it difficult for women to ask questions about pregnancy? I think because of how we ourselves, or maybe our mothers, position pregnancy. It's supposed to be a fun experience. It's a blessing, and mm. it ends there. No one tells you that you won't be comfortable in your skin. That you wake up and see your body changing and not like what you see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. That you can't fit into your clothes and you have to buy <laughs> clothes that fit you. <laughs> that even your underpants feel uncomfortable when you're at work. Mm -hmm. That you can't walk around the way you want to. You can't mm -hmm. even, your posture. I, well, I didn't know. I used and to swaddle. And by the time you get home from work, <laughs> you are not wearing underpants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I was swaddling at a point. There were times I would be at work, and once I, with my first pregnancy, once I get up, that was like from six months onwards, mm. I had this thing called, I think it's sciastica or something, where your ligaments are pulling on your nerves, and mm. so you can't walk properly. And I'll actually feel so much pain once I get up. I sit for maybe 30 minutes and I get up, and I'll have to hide my pain. Mm. And that is where we go wrong. Mm -hmm. We hide all our pain during yeah, pregnancy. And we don't tell upcoming mothers that yeah. this is actually what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'll call my mom and she'll say, oh, don't worry, very soon you'll be free. <laughs> you always uh, to end very soon. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that it's about time we started speaking yeah. up. And, and that's yeah. why this platform yeah. is really great. Yeah, because, because challenges of pregnancy, difficulties of pregnancy, it's, it's like a taboo. <laughs> To, I mean, subject. Oh, you're being, if, when you complain, you're being ungrateful to God. Yeah. You're giving the devil room to do something with your baby. Or you're acting like you're the only one who's ever been pregnant. Yeah. Because a lot of people have been pregnant. So when you act, you're feeling nauseous, you want to take care of yourself, or you, people like, it's like you're making a fuss out of it. Mm -hmm. And so normally people try to help you, and I think that's the way they perceive it to get off the discomfort that comes with it. Mm. So parents will normally try to shut it mm. and let you know it's not really a big deal. Brace it and go. So they, they don't let you talk about it. Let me take my <laughs> first break. When I come back, I'll find out some of the crazy things that they did <laughs> during their pregnancies. Well, we are also, so the standpoint is supported by Go Got Yogurt. And as a woman, yogurt is very good for you. Yes, especially during their pregnancy, at a point, all they could take was yogurt. Mm, yogurt is a complete meal. So, eh, why? <laughs> That's all they could take. <laughs> a complete meal on its own. So, very good. Matamis gives us the port. Um, House of Foods, Auntie Vera, thank you so much for supporting us with the food my crew can eat. Yes, and you make sure we get good <laughs> good food and enough for everyone cake techniques make sure that they give us the pastries and the you know all the cakes to refresh my uh, audience who clap for me most of the time at that point i thought they would clap for me i'll give them cake <laughs> Thank you. And yep, cleaning service, services also takes care of our environment. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to the Stamford. They say that when you're pregnant, you know that there's a new boss in town. 
Uh, it's not it's not about you anymore. Your body doesn't belong your time nothing of yours belongs to you anymore. The new boss detects what you do. Confession time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the crazy things you did? For my first pregnancy, I think one of the things I used to eat a lot was fetridachi okra soup. Mm -hmm. But there's they call it fetridha meaning um Without yeah. palm oil, without oil, oil. Okay. and it's um, it's a seafood okra soup, so okay. shrimp, crab, and fish. Okay. But the sad thing was after eating that, you would go and so throw everything, everything uh, up. So I, I used to have a bit of that, and then just um, fried egg, the one called sunny side up, where you see the yolk in the mm -hmm. middle, not fully fried yeah. with bread. But my third pregnancy, the experience was with the yogurt, mm -hmm. and it was a particular one. one. And uh, <laughs> I used to drive distances just to get the yogurt, because sometimes it would be scarce. Yeah. And you just wonder, ah, these people, they know that you are coming for the thing, <laughs> and you are not, they are not supplied. So, good for you. Not a <laughs> Apart from the food, what else did you do? Uh, uh, let me talk about the food. <laughs> Because I didn't have any, um, some nausea in the mornings mm -hmm. and yeah. a few times, but all three pregnancies didn't really vomit. Mm. No, I didn't have the vomiting thing. Mm -hmm. It meant that my appetite was up <laughs> and my wache, oh my God. Hmm. There was this wache at Spintex <laughs> yeah, <laughs> near the, is this Stanchat? Stanchat, yes. yes. Stanchat. You had to get me that one. <laughs> and I will fight with my husband to get me that particular <laughs> one all the time. I mm -hmm. mean, that wache. And then a few mm. others. But then chocolate, too. Mm. And it was so bad that <laughs> once he bought me chocolate, mm -hmm. and somehow he felt, I, wasn't, I, I was actually timing it. You know that mm. thing where you have food and you're timing, oh, I have something there. Yeah. Yeah. I have something there. Then after late news, I come back from work, and then I go straight to the fridge for that particular chocolate. It was a Nestle brand. And it's not there. Mm. Trust me, we fought <laughs> over that. And I was angry. I was, because I knew it was past 11 p.m. Where am I going to get that chocolate, chocolate. you know? But, and was, you wanted that. Yes. Mm. And I won't forget that. That was with my second pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, I, I did hate putting on clothes. Mm. No. At home, you won't find me in any, mm. really. I mean, I just wanted you to want be free. You want anything to touch you? No. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Afi? Well, I, I was, as I, I say, lying to myself that I was not craving anything, mm -hmm. I guess. Because I really didn't, I'll wake up and eat and move on. Then the second one, I had some time at home. But both first and second, first especially, it was malt. And it had to be chilled. Like the ice had to be in the thing. Mm -hmm. You know how when ice is in mold, it's still soft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's when. And I'll take it and take it. And then the doctor said something horrible at the end of the day with malt. You know, how it got the baby to be big and how I got big. And that's where I'm going to get a cesarean. So then I felt bad about malt. But I still wanted to have malt even in the second pregnancy. So then it was agreed. My headmaster was on my neck. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Yeah. Agosso was on yeah, my neck. Yes. <laughs> uh, I didn't have to take malt. So when I'm alone and I know he knows, mm -hmm. then I'll have malt by myself mm -hmm. and come home and pretend I've not had yeah. malt. You know? <laughs> 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 like that. <laughs> then there was this abum, mm -hmm. the one in the... Uh -huh. But that one, we got to the point, I didn't want to do the thing to eat. Mm -hmm. So I have this friend, Mary and Martha, they are mom. Mm -hmm. at Lebanon at Shaiman. Mm -hmm. That's she has to do that thing. <laughs> like it's like the, it has to come around them kind of. So I will go because I was I will drive, go to them and then I will eat a bum and there has to be a jado. Mm. I don't know if you know a jado. No. What do I call a jado? Herring, right? Herring, okay. Yeah, the dry one in mm. it. And then I'll eat a uh, come. I used to say, oh, it's because I pass there often, so <laughs> I eat when there's food. But I knew that mm -hmm. I was going for a boom. And mm -hmm. then they also knew that. So you became coming, what just... the fact is called <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> and my, my husband has a thing about, you know, some, he, he's quite funny sometimes. He has this kind of discipline around him mm -hmm. that he won't even allow small ehran. 
Mm. But he knew that <laughs> at this moment Wait. he had to allow the Isha and would drive me to go and Isha and come. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I would comfortably sit in the house and yeah, and I know that he he has no option. He has to wait. <laughs> wait. He, he has to wait for the yeah, to, to for so me for, to try yeah, and come. Did you um, start uh, Mr. Bampo from the room um, moving his? Did you ask him to move his perfumes and no? Deodorants? We didn't. I didn't have that. But I remember the one. There was one unfortunate incident where he came into the room with food, mm. and it's like. I became Usain Bolt. I just jumped from my bed to the washroom because the scent had just triggered, you know, this uh, nausea session. And I was very unhappy about that and, and complained bitterly. But I th the reason why the nausea thing um, has to be talked about, and it's something we don't, all these conditions, we don't talk about, about them uh, to, because there's a need for education, not just for we the women, but for the men, men. too, so that they know what to do, what not to do, and how to help manage the situation. Mm. So in the case of the nausea, for instance, what I suffered that was so severe about it meant that the baby was not able to absorb food from mm -hmm. me well enough. And so the baby wasn't growing mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. as it should. Because if everything you eat, everything comes, comes out, out and very little stays, mm -hmm. then it means the quantum of food the baby gets is less. Mm -hmm. Then because we don't talk about these things openly and we don't also talk with men mm -hmm. or fathers don't maybe transfer this kind of information to sons mm -hmm. who also become husbands, mm -hmm. they, are, they are really at a loss. It's not because the person doesn't care. Yeah. which is the way we, the women, then yeah. tend to perceive yeah. it. Yeah. It's just because they really don't know what to do. I agree with you, Jifa. They need to read up. Even if you're not told, read up so that you have an idea that your wife would not be behaving the way she's supposed to behave mm -hmm. because I wasn't myself. <coughs> My three pregnancies, even though they were all different, one thing I noticed once, <coughs> once I got pregnant for the very first time was that I was very weepy. I will cry over everything, apart from the movies or the sad, <laughs> the sad movies. Yes, I mean, he, he would say something that is not even meant to trigger that emotion, and I'm crying. And he's like, why are you crying? Why, why is it such a big deal? And I'm like, you don't understand. I don't know why I'm crying, and I'm just crying. <laughs> yes, I was crying all the time. I don't know why, but I'm sure, you know, the rest, the rest, um, 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 Jifa and Afi, can also attest to that there's certain things. Behaviorally, you change. You're different, you're angrier, you, things piss you off faster than normal, and you are not you, you are not the, you, you're not the Selikim he mm -hmm. saw and, so. and he loved. And so sometimes he gets terrified mm -hmm. and then he pulls back. But it shouldn't be like that, they shouldn't pull back. Mm -hmm. They should rather embrace us, support mm -hmm. us, be there for us, ask us, you know, why you're feeling this way. And then if you see the behavior repeats itself, just go quietly, just support. Rather than running, which right. men like, like to, to do. do, they would easily run, mm -hmm. uh, rather go and watch football somewhere, mm -hmm. or rather have something else to do yeah. than deal with yeah. this woman I don't know yeah. <laughs> in the house. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they, they and unfortunately, some of them actually get into affairs oh. Oh, yeah. doing that. I think that I could possibly... I don't think it's justified. I can't even understand why you do that because being preg like I can't believe it because you're pregnant together. Then you decide that what we've done together, you don't want to be part of it. <laughs> I remember at a point my husband told me that look, the bulging tummy with our baby in it, I feel it's delicate. I, I, I feel if if I'm making love to you too often or something. I'll, I may hurt the baby. Yeah. So they have their sentiments Sentiment. too. So I think talking about mm. a lot of things will mm. help so that we can understand them too. Mm. And then we'll see where we can merge. Okay, mm. so what do we do? So, mm. um, well, I shouldn't be saying this, but mm -hmm. so which, which positions will work, work. well for us? Yeah. You know, and if, it's all important. Yeah. You need to yeah. read about it. Exactly. And yeah, my husband will tell you that, we'll look at you and say, so there's a human being in your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you know. it feels, they think it, it's weird. It feels weird for them. Yeah, I'll take another break. When we come back, we'll look at the fears. Even as you go through it and the challenges and the crazy things and all that, the fears of a mother. The first three um, months, the first trimester, 
the things that you fear you you know that we'll, we'll be back with the fears <laughs> <laughs>
it would reclot, but it wouldn't be firm, and then it would break. So what happened was there was an almost complete break leading to that severe mm -hmm. bleeding. And so I asked, if I got pregnant again, would it happen? And the devastating answer is most likely. So it's so when you become aware no that this is the situation, then you become afraid. Yeah. You become afraid. So the second pregnancy... The second pregnancy was not planned. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember that night when I did the pregnancy. Because I was just lying down one Sunday after, and then suddenly I felt a taste. In, it was like sudden, a taste mm -hmm. in my mouth. And I said, no, this cannot be. <laughs> 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 my, my first daughter was still breastfeeding. She was a year and a half or something. And then at 4 a.m., I quickly went to do the test. Then I said a word I can't say here. And then my husband woke up and said, what's the matter? So I told him. And I was in tears. I wept uncontrollably. Not because I didn't want the baby. Maybe, but but because just because bed. I just felt, goodness, is this what it's going to be all over again. And Gifty, unfortunately, in a sense, it was. Unfortunately, the second one didn't make it. It was also preterm. You know, that was very painful. And this, that's not a subject for today, but maybe we need to talk about it at yeah. another time. Okay. Miscarriage yeah. and Miscar how to deal. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, that's a taboo. Yeah. That's a taboo subject. And it really... I can say that it put a real strain mm -hmm. on my husband and I when we lost that mm -hmm. child. It's taken and a still long time. Having gotten over it. Because no. I can still feel the pain no. and then you It's know. better now. At least I can talk, talk about, about it. it. Yeah. And the third one, my husband and I had to make a conscious decision that I would not work. But as we knew that we prepared for that, I myself tried to prepare by saving towards it so that when you are not working you can still live your life mm -hmm. run your home without you know feeling like, like you are pressured or burdened. burdened so i think one of the things our doctors need to help us with is identifying all these rare conditions i know there's a lot of education about preeclampsia yeah, and all, all those things but, but there, there are, are other conditions but there are other there are numerous other and that is mm -hmm. the reason why maternal deaths in other areas is so high because yeah. even me, I'm an educated person. Sure, right. But all these things are not things you are aware of and sometimes the doctors are also taken off guard. And for me, it was a really harrowing experience. experience. But we can only give gratitude to God yeah. um, for the lives of the kids they're doing. Yeah. In fact, when I look at them, I can't believe, I can't believe that they've grown yeah. so well, seeing the difficulties we had to we were in hospital mm. we are usually in hospital for about two weeks to a month before I get discharged wow <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> mm. and and they actually complain that we celebrate mothers oh. <laughs> <laughs> so on the standpoint it's not just mothers they want no the whole month <laughs> The whole month of May. Sally, the fears. My greatest fear was, I think what Jifa narrated, losing the baby mm. was my greatest fear. The first Every one, single one of them, you, you go through that? Yes, I go through that fear. And maybe fear of delivery as well. It's nine months, like Jifa, Jifa yes, said, yes. it's nine months of having to carry this thing, going through all of this. And then your prize is the baby. Yeah. So if you're afraid that you're going to die, you're hearing our maternal deaths, your friend or someone you know just died, mm -hmm. and people around you, things are happening, and you know that this is real. People mm -hmm. are losing their children. That's, that's a huge fear. Yeah. But we can give you know, our pregnant women more support. <sighs> Avi. Initially, I, I thought I was going to go through this. I'll be okay. And my fear really was how to take care of the children because mm. I thought, as for the coming, God will care, take it. care of it. I'll be good. Mm. So my part as a parent was like, how am I going to do this? Because I had this idea of how I want my children to be and how I wanted to raise them. So that was more the burden. And then when I hit the last, actually when I hit him and I was now going frequently for antenatal, nine months passed, then 
baby was not coming. So then we post them. It was hitting into month, uh, like another month already, which was like getting to 10 months, and then it was getting scary. Then we started praying. And one priest, Father Manome, I'm not sure he even knew what he was telling me. Mm -hmm. He asked me to pray Mary's Magnificent. I think that's it. And then there's a And you're all Catholics too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, of course, the Magnificent didn't tell me that mm. God has agreed that I should have a cesarean or whatever. Mm. But I had this peace, peace about within. it. It's always the and peace so within. We went. It I'm here. I'm, I think and I'm your baby is fine. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. Beautiful fire is such a lovely thing. <laughs> you know? Mothers are indeed amazing <laughs> human beings, you know, and I guess at the end mm. of it all, the beauty is seeing your baby, seeing your baby grow, and I guess that's why they say, uh, what, you will forget and you go again. You, right? when you, <laughs> you never, for, you don't forget a pain. Okay. You don't forget, but you go again. Forgets. How? <laughs> they, they, they say you will forget me, but they will tell you their experience. They will remember and then tell you their experience. It is you well. see, if you don't mind, let me, just, as mm -hmm. we mark this whole Mother's Day right. month, right. Um, just let, allow me to just thank my mother-in-law, right. um, Mrs. Rebecca Bampo. Right. Um, she put her life on hold to help me. Right. Because obviously I married her son. son. <laughs> but it's not because of that alone. Because, because she doesn't, she doesn't, marry. because she doesn't, she didn't know me. Yeah. yeah. But she, I realized that she did this not per se because of mm. her son, but because I think she felt She's that she, she, this was something she needed to do mm. and also through the process got to know me right. as a person. And now I can say that she's my, she's a strong pillar for, for me and my husband Amen. and also to my sister-in-law, yeah. Dr. Sally Bampo. She's a specialist yeah. and uh, without her, yeah. I don't know really right. what would have happened. And I'm always God grateful bless to them. Yeah. God bless them. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Yes. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, late mm. Mrs. Divina yeah. Apalu. She mm. was amazing. I yeah. miss her mm -hmm. because um, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> my mother-in-law. Yes. yes. She was also very amazing. I mean, mm. you hear stories about mother-in-laws, but she was great. The support, the prayers, staying with me throughout the deliveries. Um, somehow. I didn't know I was going to lose her before the third baby. Mm -hmm. But before she passed, and unfortunately, she, she had a brain tumor before she did. Mm -hmm. She told me, I've groomed you enough. You can do this oh. by yourself. And I did. And yeah. I'm proud. But yeah. God bless her soul. God bless her soul. Amen. Don't cry. <laughs> God bless her. At least I know that she was grateful. Yeah. And she knew that you were grateful to her. Yeah. She knew that you were grateful to her. Now you're going to make me cry. Stop <laughs> that. <laughs> so that don't make me cry. Yeah. Afi. I, I would want to say thank you to my mom. Yeah. My, my mom, as I sit here, the little ones are with her. I don't know what would have been without my yeah. mom. At this point, I'll take a break. When I come back, I'll give you a bit of me. Pregnancy is not an easy journey. It can be tough. Pregnant women need support. They need care. We need to be there for them. We need to stop this whole taboo surrounding pregnancy and its difficulties. We need to speak up. We need to talk about it to save lives. Because telling people to shut up is telling people to die in silence. If they can't talk about it, they will keep it in they will not complain and the maternal and infant mortality rate will keep rising. That is not what we want. And I take this opportunity to congratulate Seth Kwame Boating and the whole multimedia team for what they are doing for Confanoshi Teaching Hospital. There are a lot of hospitals also going through that, but they started with CAS. Hopefully, they'll get to other hospitals as well. But in the meantime, woman, take your destiny into your hands. When you're pregnant, it's about you and your baby and your God. 
nothing else matters. My name is Ohineri Gifty and as usual, I have super crazy faith in God, but above all, I sit here and talk. Not because I've had anything easy, not because I know it all, but it's just by the grace of God. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye. -bye.